in order to get a 10 bagger, and this is something that people have to realize is mm -hmm. in most cases, that means that you're going to have to sit through some bases. You're going to have to sit through some pullbacks. It's not like your, your metal will not be tested. That's just not the way this game works. Right. Um, so do you, you know, typically, you know, we're often selling quite a bit when there's a bear market. Mm -hmm. Are you, are you holding, you know, through bear markets? Um, at what level do you say, okay, nothing's working right now. I've, I've got to raise more cash. And that might include something that you think has great potential, but just might be in a corrective phase now. Right. Well, the situation, uh, the, the, you have to have the right situation. So the situation was pandemic bear, mm -hmm. you know, 2020, everything was going down. Everything was below like their 40 week moving averages. And then we had a quick pandemic bull. So it was mm -hmm. like, okay, which are the ones that are moving quickly on strength and which are the ones that should I go into for really holding on for the long haul? And that was my mentality. So I was like, okay, NVIDIA has been a great stock for many years. It's still in the AI space. It's still having that new. And if there was a time to get into NVIDIA, like to me, that was already in my head, like, okay, this is the time because everything is just corrected, NVIDIA included. Let me get in there now and let me try and hold it for as long as I can. That was the setup. And so you yeah. have to have all the pieces to coming together. Right. And so I, I'm I'm pulling up a monthly chart right here. And I, I'm pointing to again, you know, the, the the pandemic bear market was really just one month, right? It was March. Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, we we were, <laughs> we were we were at highs in February. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, March was was ugly. Uh, and then we had the follow-through day at the beginning of April, and by May, we were back to highs. Now right. Nvidia, you had to be quick. You had to be quick. Yeah, Nvidia had this, you know, it, it had been basing for a while before. True. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I I owned this, um, you know, back here, and and I, I do uh, need to disclose that I do own a, a small position in it still. I actually sold uh, a lot of it, you know, because I had like a twenty five percent position, so I sold a lot of it um, after the the downside reversal not too long ago. But um, I did have some of it. I, I think I was selling in here in two thousand eighteen. And I might have bought it back a couple times in here, but um, yeah, it was it was in 2020 that I kind of went back in with size. So this, let's go ahead and go. To, we'll go to the weekly chart to kind of, um, uh, and I'm going to change the scale on here. Yeah. I know that Mike Webster would, you know, be like, "Oh, how could you?" But sometimes we use this best fit scale just so you can see stuff. Um, and you know, and actually, I'm going to. Well, that's uh, the base right there on the left, the one I bought anyway. Yes, right here. Um, yeah. Here's here's March 2020. If you want, uh, add the index line to the chart. Okay. That would be helpful. Let's uh, add that. So here it is on the top. You so go. you can see the yep. S and P 500 coming down very sharply here, as did Nvidia. But one of the things that you'll notice, uh, the RS line was really strong uh, as it, you know, and and, and look, it was. A, a quick snapback and you mm -hmm. actually had kind of this cup with handle look to it right. um with with nvidia so so you were buying right in here i assume right in there yeah okay and so now uh kind of walk us through you know there was this period here where it didn't do anything for a long time so what, what are you thinking to yourself during this time right well again my mindset uh, for the first purchase was just buy it once and then mm -hmm. this is going to be long term. I wasn't really thinking of, it, thinking of it as the stock that it is like today in the last year, how how quickly it's moved. I was just thinking of it from a long term perspective. But what has really made a difference for me in my long term trading is what we called in the book, the, you know, the life cycle trade with my co-authors is the mental capital preservation, which is really just a three big words to, mm -hmm. that means how many, how much gain do I want to retain? And so for me, like in general, if I have that hundred percent stock that I've told you that those are my goals to have a hundred percent in a stock, I want to retain at least 50 to 60% of my gains. And anecdotally in our research, we're like, well, how much gains would you need to retain for like a multi-year great stock? Mm -hmm. And we said, well, maybe 35. So 
we never tested it, but in the back of my mind, 35 was what I was using for NVIDIA. So no matter how much it went up, I was going to retain at least 35% of my gains. So I wanted to give it the most possible room <laughs> mm-hmm. so that I could hold it because we did have examples of Tesla and Amazon and Facebook that went, you know, hundreds of a percent and you could have used MCP 35 and even at 35 with a hundred thousand dollar investment, you could still have like an enormous change in your portfolio and in your life with right. just that. So we, we did know it was possible with those great big stocks. Mm-hmm. And so that was my mindset going into it. So when it was basing in those three bases that you talked about, the deepest one of that, of those three, it was like a, a three bases in a row was 25%. And I had enough cushion to sit through that. I mean, you can you can clearly see that on the chart. There was a lot of space. Mm-hmm. So it didn't really phase me because I knew where my line was and I knew going in how much room I wanted to give it. OK, so, um, you know what? And and let, let's go ahead and just talk about the formula real quick. So, okay. um, you know, no one promised you there was not going to be any math here. So uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll just kind of do this formula real quick. So you got the buy price plus your peak price minus the buy price. So that's basically what kind of what kind of appreciation you had at the top, right? It's just the gain, right? Yeah, it's just right. The, the difference uh, in price from the peak to this. So it's just the gain that you got. And then you want to multiply it by whatever percent gain you want to retain. So if I want to make sure I always retain 50% of my profits, you multiply it by 0.5. If I want to retain 35%, I multiply it by 0.35. And then that right. gives me the price. That's my stop loss for whatever retention I want to keep. Mm-hmm. So unlike Justin, I'm giving you the math. You don't have to do it unless you want to. Right. <laughs> and this is an insight. Hey, that was Webby. Don't call. blame that on me. Yeah, that's the most recent um, other podcast. Yeah, and then, so, uh, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> oh well, I was just gonna say. So just to put some numbers on it, like if the if if you bought it at a hundred, and let's say you got a double. Okay, so oh, this is awesome. I got a double. You made a hundred points on it. That's what a double would be for a hundred dollar stock. Uh, you're up to 200. So of course, 200 minus your buy price of 100 is the 100 profit that you have. Multiply that by, you know, 35%. That's going to be 35. So basically 135 would be your thing. Okay, let's go ahead and we're going to go to the chart and see how see how this math kind of worked out, um, you know, for you. So uh, back to NVIDIA, we had, you know, I mean, just from here, you went from, you know, as you said, a 675 was that Mm -hmm. uh, where where you said your split adjusted buy was um, to, you know, what, 14? Right. And some change. So that's right in line. That's right in line with uh, once I have 100% gain, I want to give it at least. A, a 50% or 60%, I want to retain on nor- for a normal stock, for a stock that I'm not going in with the long haul. Mm-hmm. Uh, that would still be enough for me to hold it from that perspective too, where I'm retaining only 50 to 60% of my gains too. So I just wanted to point that out, that even with the my pseudo not longer term strategy, but still a long-term strategy, I would still be holding it through that base as well, because mm-hmm. I already had 100% between the first base and then these next bases. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, you know, one of the things that during the time it was doing these bases, mm-hmm. it, it spent quite a bit of weeks below the 10 week moving average line. But a lot of times you're, you're kind of looking at the 40 week and it looks like the 40 week actually ended up giving NVIDIA support at that time. Right. Exactly. And then, you know, the other thing I want to say about is NVIDIA is now granted, you know, past performance is not indicative of future <laughs> performance. But NVIDIA has done this before. I had never owned NVIDIA before, but I studied it a lot because I was like, why didn't I buy it? You know, when it had that first run from, yeah, back, I don't remember what year it was. Yeah, 2016 to 2018 yep. was Yeah, phenomenal. exactly. So I watched it for a long time. And it and it did, what it did in that uh, those three bases we were looking at is done that before, mm-hmm. where it just kind of consolidates tightly, you know, 20%. I don't know if you consider that tight, but that's pretty tight, you know, not 30, not 40, not 50. And then it will do like a base on base and then a base reset. So I also had that in the back of my mind, like what has NVIDIA done in the past? And how can I use that as information to give me a clue of what it might do, you know, this time? Is it going to be similar? 
And is mm -hmm. it going to be in character, out of character from its past history? Mm -hmm. Now let's go ahead and fast forward a little bit back to the back to the present for uh, not the present, but the recent present. Uh, I guess um, you know you you came out of that area um, mm -hmm. back to highs. Mm -hmm. You know it was looking good, and then we have basically a lot of stuff started topping in February of 2021 in terms of the growth stocks, um, and then of course 2022 ended up being you know, a full on bear. So split right. adjusted prices, because remember, we have this 10 for one split here. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we were at uh, all the way up to what 30, almost 35, and came yeah. down to $10 and 81 cents. I had a 427% gain at that peak. Okay. And then yeah, it went down about 69%. Okay. And at that very low, I only had a gain of 64%. So 427% <laughs> gain down to 60. Right. In range. Okay. Exactly. So how, how here, you, but here was my how mindset. How do you deal with that psychologically, Kathy? Yes. I'm, I'm trying to understand because I'm just imagining that in myself and I would just be like, oh, kicking myself. Right. Like, right. I had it and so much of it is gone. So how right. do you do and, and I should point out at that point too, it was actually a 15% retention of gains. If I had sold it at that point, I would have only retained 15% of my gains, which is really interesting when you think mm -hmm. about the math, because it's like, wow, you only retain 15% of your gains, but it was still 64%. Yeah, you know, right. <laughs> yeah. The math is just crazy. But, but again, my mindset was long term. And I was, I had a feeling that, you know, it was going to potentially undercut that structure of those bases that we looked at. And then I also knew the market was, you know, had the three waves down. NVIDIA had the three waves down. You know, maybe I had a chance here. The market was going to turn. But again, my mindset for all my, since I am a long term trader and, uh, you know, being a long term trader, you have to withstand uh, big drawdowns. But then yeah. also the potential for big gains. So my mindset is I'm always retaining gains. So if I'm always retaining gains, I'm always making money. Right. So it was worth it to me to give this because it still wasn't, I still wasn't negative and it wasn't mm -hmm. my money anyway, because I hadn't made this the sell. You were playing, so you were playing with house money still. Exactly. So the risk and the value of the potential of what could happen was worth it to me.